the seat. Praise the Lord. This is Shiva Johnson, your host for this edition of Only the Truth. It is such a privilege to be able to come into your homes today and minister the Word of God. And today I want to discuss with you prevailing prayer. What kind of prayer pierces the spirit realm, removes the hindrances, and brings you back the answer? And I'm not talking about, you know, when it's not God's will, because there are many Christians who have been praying for prayer requests for so long, and they haven't received an answer yet. And I know there are situations that it's not God's will, or it's not God's timing, but I'm referring to situations when you know it's God's will. And you know it's been overdue as far as timing. And yet, your answer, your prayers are not prevailing. You're not receiving an answer. That's what I would like to discuss today with you, right after we hear a beautiful song from Michael Krynak. I believe it is called Answering My Prayer. Answering My Prayer. I I have another one prepared that's just as beautiful. All right. We'll and uh, you know, and and you know who the source of all our prayer is? It's Christ Himself, is it not? Amen. It is Christ Himself. Is He not the bread of life? Does not the bread of life always the bread of life always answers our prayer? Hallelujah. So I want to do a song called Bread of Life, and uh, it's based on Him always answering our prayer. Because if anyone answers our prayer, it's the bread of life. I would like to do this for you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Thou art with us, God, forever. Let's be the man you choose to call by name, call by name. I just can't keep it to myself. I just got to tell someone like no one else. I just can't keep the secret in. Just got to tell someone that Christ is him. One and only one of God, the maker of all life. If you've seen this face of God, you beheld, you have beheld the bread of life. You beheld the bread of life. called me I was so far away I never knew the morning from the night of the day but like a father before me you wouldn't let my heart slip away slip away just can't keep it to myself. I just got to tell someone like no one else. I just can't keep the secret in no more. I just got to tell someone that Christ is him. One and only one of God, maker of all life. If you've seen this face of God, you beheld, you have beheld the bread of life. You beheld the bread of life. 
you beheld the bread of life. The source of all our prayer, Thank the bread you. of life. Thank you, Shiva. Thank God. you so much. Thank you, Michael, for that song. That was beautiful. So back to prevailing prayer. How can we pray effective prevailing prayers? Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So everything you need already exists in the glory realm. But the catch is that it is in a spiritual form. And it takes a prevailing, effective prayer to materialize the spiritual form of your prayer request and make it manifest in the natural. For that to happen, we need to communicate with the glory in the language that it understands and responds to. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. And you say, I have asked for so many things and I still haven't received them. Because you have to communicate with the glory in a language it understands. You have to ask in the language that it understands. Right. It's like a computer. You give a voice command to the computer and, or a written command you know, in your own mother tongue, but the computer has no clue what you're saying. It doesn't understand your language. So a software in the computer that was written by a computer programmer translates your voice command or your in command. So it translates your language into the computer language, which is zeros and ones. That's the language that the computer understands. And then the computer responds to you mm -hmm. And you think the computer responded to your voice command. Yes. Whereas the computer had no clue what you were saying in your language. Right. The same goes with the glory. You have to ask for your prayer request in the language that the glory understands and responds to. I'm sure you're now puzzled asking what language is it that the glory understands? Well, it's the wave language. You remember, Brother Michael? Yes. It's the waves of glory. The waves of glory, yes. What is the glory? The glory is the waves of magnificent energy yes. emanating from God. Yes. The waves of, you know, energy and sound and light and frequency emanating right. from God. That's what the glory is. Of course, it's not the created light like we see here. It's the creative light. Right. Creative sound. Yes. Not the created sound. Yes. So the language that the glory understands is the wave language. Oh. Because it's the waves of glory, right? Yes. And now you're like, okay, how am I going to speak the wave language? Lucky for you, God has put the technology already in you. Let me explain by giving you a you know, little scientific background. Our thoughts and our emotions, you know, our feelings, they are transmitted in our body from one neuron to the next as electric impulses. To simplify it, our thoughts and emotions create electricity in our body. But Michael, I remember one time I was attending this science meeting. Right. And the speaker had this gadget. I forget what it was called. Right. At this gadget, at you know, contact with human body would light up. Oh, really? Wow. He wanted to show us how electricity is always going through our body. Like wow. our body always has electricity running through it. So our thoughts and our emotions and many other functions in our body, they 
they are, they create electricity. Yes. Okay? And we know from physics that wherever there is electricity, there is an electromagnetic field formed around the electric current. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? That means around every person, there is an electromagnetic field. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Is that, is that the glory of God? Is that his glory in us? No. Explain, please. <laughs> if you let me finish, okay. <laughs> you will understand. <laughs> we are made in the image of God. Yes. So he has put in us the same creative technology yes. as is in him. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's separate. It's different from the glory of God. It's, it's in a way, our glory. <laughs> you know? Right. But so, like I said, our thoughts and emotions create electricity in our body. Oh. And wherever there is electricity, there is an electromagnetic field formed around it. Yes. Okay. So this is the reason we can get good or bad vibes from people. Mm. Because there is an electromagnetic field according to their thoughts and emotions oh. formed around them. Yes. Okay. This is science. Okay. This is not new age. I know the new age religion have been using this and teaching right. this. But they just discovered it. This is... God science, okay? Because, you know, anybody can use the laws of God. Any, even an atheist can sow a seed into the ground, grow a fruit tree, yes. and enjoy its fruits. Of course. So he just used the law of seed and harvest. Mm -hmm. So anybody can use the law. Just because they use it doesn't mean it belongs to them, okay? Right. This is God science. So... When you focus your mind and your heart on your prayer request, the waves generated by your thoughts and your emotions will be of the right wavelength that will resonate with the spiritual form of your prayer request in the glory and materialize it and manifest it in the natural. Wow, that's amazing. Isn't that something? It's amazing. That's the creative technology that God has put in us. Mm. So by our thoughts and emotions, we can create our world. So if you don't like your world, don't blame God for it. Blame yourself. Mm. Your thoughts and your emotions create your world. Amen. Hebrews 11.3 says, actually, Brother Michael. I can read 11, uh, Hebrews 11.3. It says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. See? Things that are seen were made by things that were unseen. Mm -hmm. Everything you need already exists in the glory, but, <coughs> but in spiritual form. Right. So this is the creative technology also that God used to create the world. God spoke things into existence. Not the verbal language, but the telepathic language. Through his mind and through his heart, he spoke. The wave language. Okay? Because our thoughts and emotions create waves, remember? In the spirit, we communicate through our thoughts and emotions. I remember one time, Brother Michael... I was having a visitation from Jesus, That's right. and he spoke to me without even moving his lips. Yes. And I understood what he said. Yes. This is how we communicate in the spirit, yes. through our thoughts and emotions, through, you know, they call it telepathic language. Right. Actually, verbal communication is the lowest form of communication. Mm. That's why there are so many misunderstandings. Yeah, and I think, I think God does communicate it through us, through thoughts, through his thoughts coming into our thoughts. Exactly. There's an integration there. Exactly. And that's, that's exactly what you're saying. That's the wave language I'm talking about. That's how we communicate with the glory. Yes. By our thoughts and emotions. So made in the image of God, the same creative technology was placed in us. Yes. So even an atheist can use this creative technology and receive blessings from the glory, right. and not even acknowledging God. Right. 
And this is why the law of attraction that the New Age religion teaches works. This right. is the reason behind it. And this is why there are optimistic people who don't even believe in God, who they, you know, attract blessings and receive blessings that pessimistic Christians do not. Mm. For example, if you are a jealous person, it's very hard to be able to receive from, your glo from the right. glory. Yes. Because when you're asking, when you're praying, the, frequent, the, the emotion of jealousy mm. gets you out of tune with the glory. Right, of the glory of God. It's like, you know, your radio receiver, if you, don't tu if you tune it to the wrong frequency, yes. you won't receive information from the radio station. Right. The same way. If you are tuned out of the glory by negative emotions such as jealousy, envy, fear, mm -hmm. oppression, lust, unbelief, doubt, then you're tuned out of the glory. So don't expect to receive the answer to your prayer if you pray in doubt, for example. So focused prayer is very important because it's through our mind and our heart that we communicate with the glory. Right. Therefore, focused prayer is very important. Mm -hmm. There are actually people that are businesses that hire prayer intercessors mm -hmm. to pray for them. Mm. Prayer is for free, I know. But they understand that if this person who is, you know, praying for them, if he has to go to work and worry about bills, then he won't be able to do focused prayer for the prosperity of their business. Right. So your, if you want your prayer to be prevailing, you need to focus on your prayer request. I know people who pray in tongues, for example, yes. and they say, I'm going to, for example, pray for, I don't know, financial prosperity for half an hour a day in tongues. And while they're speaking in tongues, their mind is wandering off to other things, things other than you know, wealth and financial blessing. So they could be praying for a missionary in China yes. and thinking they are praying for their prayer request. So you need to focus your mind. This is a creative technology that God has put in us, okay? You need to focus your mind on your prayer request. Yes. So if you have like a list of prayer and you're just rehearsing and your mind is not really there, this is not going to be a prevailing prayer. Right. Okay. Also, you can only prevail for one thing at a time. You can't be praying for 10 things and prevail for 10 things at a time. Because how can you focus your mind on 10 things at the same time? God can do that, but you're not God yet. Yes. <laughs> one day you'll be able to do that. Yes. But you need to focus on one thing at a time. The more focused you are, your, your mind is the, the great, the more powerful the waves generated by your thoughts, mm -hmm. and the more prevailing your prayer will be. Because the frequency of your thoughts, they tune you to your prayer request in the glory. Amen? Interesting. Very good. But focused mind for prevailing prayer is only half the equation. We only need, we also need our emotions to get involved. Remember, thoughts and emotions. Right. A main component missing from our prayers has been our emotions. James 5.16 says, James? But Michael is going to yes, read it for us. It. James 5.16 says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Did you hear that? It doesn't say prayer. It says fervent prayer avails much. According to dictionary, fervent means passionate, intense, heartfelt, deeply felt, right. emotional. Right. Animated, hot, burning. That's right. That's how I've heard of revivals birth because a group of a small group of people were their hearts were was burning 
with the desire for revival. Right. They weren't just like, Lord, please save the souls. Please, Lord God. They were burning mm -hmm. with the desire for revival. <laughs> so if a group of people who are passionate about a cause get together and pray, that's what I would call a powerful prayer group. Yes, yes. There was this um, famous evangelist, I forget his name now, before he was saved, he used to attend this small Bible study group. And then he says that one day they asked him, oh, brother, do you have a prayer request you would like us to pray for? And then he goes, and he wasn't saved yet, he, so he goes, no, 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 thank you. I have yet to see a prayer of yours to be answered. Oh, really? In other words, this group were not a passionate, hot-burning prayer group. They were just rehearsing prayers. That's why their prayers were not prevailing. And they were not a testimony to this person who wasn't even saved yet. So prayer has to be emotional too. But like I said, it has to be positive emotions, not negative emotions. Positive emotions such as compassion. You know, compassion is beyond sympathy. I've heard of actually um, testimonies of people who were healed, like someone praying for someone's healing, but they were moved in their heart with such compassion yes. for the person that the person miraculously on the spot got healed. The intensity of the waves of that emotion of compassion resonated with the glory. Ah, resonated the glory. And, re the and glory moved God. the glory. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Wow. All right, or I've heard testimon te testimonies of miracles as a result of that. For example, there was this couple who were caught in, a, in snow, in storm. Yes. There were no cars around. And they were going to die because their, the car broke down. Mm -hmm. There was no one to help. And they were dying of cold. The husband looked at the face of the wife. Mm -hmm. And he, was, he saw the look of death on her face. Oh. And he was moved with such compassion. Wow. That he got out of the car. And he said such a heartfelt prayer. That instantly a miracle happened. The car started working again. Mm, interesting. Hallelujah. So, yes, instead of just saying a prayer, think a prayer. Yes. Feel a prayer. Yes. And the more focused you think it, mm -hmm. and the more intense you feel it, the more effective and prevailing your prayer will be. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have this book called Prayer Request that is going to be on the screen in a minute for you. It ex uh, in this book, I will explain to you how to pray prevailing prayers, how to pray effectual, fervent, yes. prevailing prayers. Yes, very good. And... I think we have a few minutes left for Buddy Michael to, to do sing one more for us. One more song, song, please. One more? We love you. Thank you so much, Pastor Shiva. I will do it. And you know, God is so glorious, and he's the one. You were talking about his glory mm -hmm. coming upon us through prayer. So I was going to sing a song, a very quick song, called So Glorious, and uh, So Glorious, because the the... The, the end result of all, all our prayers is that His glory shines in our lives. So I want to do this song, song called So Glorious. The beauty of your love and your kindness, majesty of mercy on us, promises of heaven never ending. God is with us.
so glorious, so glorious, we will seek you, so glorious, we will worship you, so glorious, we will lift our hands to the God of all our trust. So glorious, so glorious, everlasting Father, everlasting Son, Yeshua, God's Holy One, your forgiveness, let it fall on us, God is with us, so glorious. So, like I said, um, the book, Prayer Request, that I have written, I will send it to you for a love gift of any amount. It will be on its way to you. Just request for it and uh, send your love gift. Hallelujah. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, please pray this with me today. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins, Lord. I ask you, Lord Jesus, that you change me into the person you want me to be. Father, I have committed many sins in the past, but you are a forgiving God. Lord Jesus, I ask you to change my thoughts, to change my mind, my to renew my mind, and to give me a new heart. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, I want to be your child. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 